Hi guys, um, we're back and we are doing 8.4 today, Properties of Logarithms. And I just want to um, apologize for the last video, we got cut off there at the very end, but um, hopefully you were able to work through those graphing problems. So um, today we're going to be talking about properties of logarithms. And there are three main properties that we have. We have the product property, the quotient property, and the power property. And basically what that tells us is that when you um, multiply when you have a log of a product you can split or expand that logarithm into addition now this should kind of make sense because we understand hopefully by now that the uh, logarithm is basically kind of like the exponent in other words when you look at something like um, in exponential form 2 to the third power equals 8 for example this is the exponent 3 and when you do a log which would be log the inverse of that would be log base 2 of 8 equals 3. So um, basically in the exponential form, the exponent is the input. It's what goes into the function and 8 is what comes out. But in the logarithmic case, um, what goes into the function is the y value, the, the 8, and what comes out is the exponent. So basically a logarithm is an exponent. And so I say that because these properties should make sense when you think about what happens to, what are the properties of exponents? So when you have x squared times x cubed, you add the exponents in that case, and you get x to the fifth. So it should make sense that when we're multiplying the exponents, we actually split that into addition. Um, and then when you divide exponents, like x to the fourth um, over x squared, for example, then we get x to the 4 minus 2, which is x squared. So again, the property for exponents was, when we have division, is that you subtract the exponents. So again, here you're looking at the log of a quotient, and we separate it into subtraction. And then you have a power raised to a power, and when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply the exponents. So something like x squared to the third power now becomes x to the sixth power because you multiply the exponents. So this is um, an exponent being raised to a power. So you have a power and a power, and then you multiply them. So you can see that what's happening in this power property is the x kind of goes in front, and then you multiply. So it becomes x times log base b of m. So those are the three properties that we're going to be dealing with. I do want to be uh, to caution you that there is no log. A lot of times people try to do um, log base b of m plus n, and they think that this property, which doesn't exist by the way, is equal to this because of the plus. But this would be the equivalent of what would happen if you had x squared plus x cubed. Um, in this case, you can't combine those two terms because they don't have the same exponent. Um, when you're multiplying x squared and x cubed, that's when you add the exponents. But when you're adding them, there's nothing to be done there as far as simplifying. So this property doesn't exist. So I just want you to be careful with that. So I'm going to erase some of this extra stuff that's on here um, so that you can I just have like a cleaner, a cleaner uh, looking board here. Um, you want to keep these um, three properties though. We're going to be using them over and over and over again in this lesson. So um, I just want to make sure that you have that. Okay, so we're gonna start with some examples and um, in these examples, they want us, there's basically two kinds of things that you do with um, logarithms, and that is that you um, want to either expand them or condense them. In other words, you either want to take multiple logarithms and write it as a single logarithm, or you want to take a single logarithm and expand it to multiple logarithms. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that with the different properties. So. First is, um, I want to uh, do this guy here. And so what's gonna happen is I'm going to apply our properties. Because I have subtraction here, I'm gonna use the quotient property. And I'm going to rewrite that as log base two. And by the way, this only works if the bases are the same. So log base two, log base two are the same. So I'm gonna do division. And I always divide the first and then um, divide the first by the second. So. 8 divided by 4 would be the property that we're looking at here. And so then because 8 divided by 4 is actually 2, then that would be log base 2 of 2. And I can actually further simplify this because I think that 
we are all aware that um, two, remember the question was last time that two to what power is two? Well, two to the one power is two. So the answer, the final final answer would be one. So it says here, state the property or properties that were used and then rewrite the expression. So I would rewrite it as a one. And so my properties that I've used, I've used several properties today. So I want to list them all. That's why it says, sometimes you only use one, you use twice. So what I've used um, is actually the quotient property. The quotient property is being used when I did the division here. Um, and that's the only property that we have. This is not really a property, it's just the, the final answer. So over here, we have another, another, another case. And what's happening here is that I can see a product. I'm multiplying x cubed times y. So I want to do one thing at a time. And this time, it's log base b. And this is a case where instead of having two logarithms, this is two logarithms, and I write it as one logarithm, I'm going to take one logarithm and expand it into more than one logarithm. So in this case, I'm going to get my product happening first. So I will do log of x cubed plus log base b of y. That's using the product property to separate it into addition. So product property, I'm going to list what I'm using. And then I can still use the power property here because I have a, an exponent. So what happens with the exponent is that it comes out in front and becomes multiplication. So then my final answer here will be 3 times log base b, sorry, I didn't write the b there, log base b of x plus log base b of y. And so over here, I probably want to put that was the power property. So in this case, I used two properties. I used the product property to make an addition, and then I used the power property to put the three in front. And in this case, because these are variables, we can't really reduce it any further. This would be my final answer. So. Now you have a chance to do some of that um, in, these, in, this, uh, in this example, and then we'll get to the next example. Again, doing a lot of the same thing. It says write each logarithmic expression as a single logarithm. So in this case, we're taking multiple logarithms and writing it as a single logarithm. Only in this case, they're not asking us to write the properties that we used. Um, I'll still mention them along the way, but it's not actually part of the, of the, of the example. So again, we have here some subtraction happening. So when you have subtraction here, it means that you're going to get the quotient property and you're going to write log base 3 of 20 divided by 4. And then because 4 goes to 25 times, we're going to write log base 3 of 5 and leave it like that. Um, we don't want to write, um, we don't know 3 to what power is 5 is going to be a decimal. So we don't want decimals, so we're just going to leave our answer like that. Okay, so that's about as easy as it, as it gets, or as hard as it gets, I guess. Um, so in this case, we have kind of the backwards of what happened in the previous example with the three in front. When you have a number in front of the log, then you know that you can use the power property kind of backwards. So um, the three can go back to the exponent spot. So we're going to use that power property and go log base 2 of x to the third, and then plus log base 2 of y. And then because we have addition here, that means that we can convert this to a product. So log base 2, and we're going to multiply x to the third, and the y. And again, this only works because they have to have the same bases. They're both base 2s, and in that case, they're both base 3s. So this would be my final answer for example 2, part b. All right? So now we're going to have you try some on your own, where you're taking multiple logarithms and making them into a single logarithm. This part C might be a little bit of a doozy, but I want you guys to try it because it has three um, logs there. But I will give you a hint, you want to try two at a time. Um, do the first two and then do the third one um, last. So our last example for today is the other thing I told you that we could do is instead of taking um, multiple logarithms and writing it as one logarithm, we're going to take one logarithm and expand it, separate it into multiple logarithms. So we'll get started over here. And because I have a, a division going on here, I'm going to separate that, use the quotient um, property, 
to separate that into x minus log base 5 of y. So the top goes first, the bottom goes second, and that's pretty much all you have to do for part A. It's not a very complicated one. Um, and then we have part B, and part B, there's a couple things you have to be careful about. Um, you might think to yourself that you want to try the power property first because you see the 4 right there, um, but you don't want to do the 4 first because um, you want to, the 4 is not, is not affecting the 3. If there were parentheses here, then you would do the exponent first, but there's not parentheses. Um, so because of that case, that's the, there we go. Because of that, I need to deal with my product first. So I'm going to use the product property to put log 3. And notice that it doesn't have a little number here. If it doesn't have a little number, then we assume that it's base 10, but you don't have to write it if they didn't write it. So log 3 and then plus log r to the 4th. So the fourth, um, the exponent of four is only affecting the r, not the three. So that means that now when I do my uh, power property, now I can bring the four to the front and get four log r, and this would be log three over here. Um, the difference in the two answers would be that if you did the four first, then the 4 would be affecting the 3 and the r, and you would have had 4 log 3 and 4 log r. But that would be the wrong answer because the 4 is not affecting the 3 at all. If there were parentheses, then the 4 would be on both logs, not only on one. Okay? So this is um, how you expand logarithms. And so I have a couple of examples for you to expand these guys. And once you've done that, you will have completed the lesson for today. I will see you in class, and uh, we'll go through your do-it-yourselves. Okay, thanks for watching.